the bite, but the bun, yeah. Step one was to cut out all of the pattern pieces with the grain of the fabric. Since I was working with fabric that had a pattern print, I had to be sure that all of my pattern pieces were going in the same direction with the grain. Listen up as I explain how to save fabric by utilizing the bookend method and the method I chose to line the bodice. I have my bodice pieces cut out. The pattern actually has four bodice pieces, which is the front bodice, the front, the back, and then we have the back facing and we have the front facing. So the facings for example, this is the front facing. Of course, the front facing would only cover the top half um, of the inside of the garment. If it's a casual piece, I'm okay with that. But because this is pretty much a you know semi-formal to a dressy piece, I wanted the bodice to be fully lined. So I did not use these pieces at all. So the only pieces that I used um, for the bodice is the front piece, the front piece and the back piece. And then I cut a second uh, piece each out of the lining fabric. So I purchased more lining fabric that I needed, but you know, it'll never go to waste because I'll have enough to um, line a second bodice. So I purchased a yard. So. My yard of fabric, of course. And satin's usually, um, yeah. So, you know, my yard of fabric, this this wide, correct? You know, it's folded and, and so on and so forth. Rather than lining up um, your pieces because they have to be cut on the fold. So you would cut one, two, right, wrong. You waste fabric that way. That's why my fabric looks like this because I use the bookend method in cutting out um, the bodice. So you take your lining fabric, and so this is your fabric completely open at its widest point. You've got salvage to salvage. What you wanna do is you want to take, open it out and take one end of your salvage and Fold it over to the middle point, okay? So that, and I, I'm gonna flip the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So we have the fabric open completely out. Here's my salvage in, and here is my middle point. So I'm gonna take my salvage and I'm going to fold it to the middle point. So that's one, and I have a fold, folded edge here, okay? And then, I will take one of my bodice pieces, put it on the fold, cut it out. And then, so that's soil. I still have one whole half left. So here's my other salvage edge, and I'm gonna bring that to the center, okay? And I have another fold, and so I'm going to put my second bodice piece on the fold, and I cut it out, okay? So then, that's why I ended up with fabric that looked like that. I have another whole half a yard, just about. It's a little less than a half a yard, so. So this was my first uh-oh moment. After I completely cut out the bodice in the fashion fabric as well as in the lining pieces, I realized that I forgot to um, increase the length of the bodice by two inches. Usually when I am working with a 
factory pattern, meaning one of the pattern companies of the big four, they're usually too short. I have a long torso, so I almost always have to make this adjustment. So using the bookend method, because I didn't want to waste any more fabric, I make the adjustment and that's what I'm demonstrating here. It's that sweet life, raise your cross, made some do crack a smile, he asked if I could stay a while, I'm living that high life, time to catch a flight but you can make me go, unlocking all the memories of my new home, ventilated echoes playing to and fro, to and fro. Some kids dancing in the alleyway Crazy how the melodies began to play, yeah Tell me how you feel it when you hear the lyric, yeah My heart's in Stockholm Now I never wanna go home I left my heart in Stockholm I brought a girl on my best bed. She said I already told ya, yeah, yeah. I never dated a black guy. I said you brown yourself. Let me offer. And here comes a uh oh moment number two. After I got all my measurements in place, I realized that I did not line up my darts so i had to um get a ruler and put the markings in for my waist darts and then move everything over After we got all that straightened out, it was time to pin and sew in all the darts. I double checked that my darts are lined up okay by making sure that the pin hits the dart line on the opposite side of the fabric. After double checking that everything lines up okay, I then stitch my darts in place. Next, I press my darts. Waist darts get pressed towards the center of the bodice and the breast darts get pressed down towards the waistband. Sunlight that always stays in by the waterway. It's that sweet life, sweet life, sweet life. At this point, I am ready to surge all of my pieces. After I finish serging all of my pieces, I stitch the side seams and shoulder seams and then I try the bodice on my dress form. Listen up as I explain my third uh-oh moment. Hi and welcome back to my channel, Simply Queen by Sherelle. That's me, the modern day seamstress. So I am back today to continue working on my semi-formal um, two-piece which I made a lot of progress on the bodice yesterday, but when I went to try the bodice on my body double, um, we had a little bit of an issue. So I decided to make a second bodice. Um, so I'm actually kind of starting over again. So this time what I'm going to do is um, I've already cut it out and um, I've already stitched in all of the darts 
um, part of the problem was I needed a little more room in the waist so I guess the um, COVID uh, pounds are still hanging around so um, what I did was um, I just uh, decreased the size of the uh, waist darts bus darts and everything else was fine it was just I needed a little bit extra in the waist darts and when I physically tried it on um, and I pulled it a little too much I tore it so what I need to do now is add some reinforcement into the seams where I'm going to put the zipper so I'm going to do that now and then when we get to the part where I am going to show you how to turn the lining I have the front and back pieces sewn together at the shoulder I am now going to attach the lining piece to the main fashion fabric and I'm going to pin it at the neckline and the um, back neckline once it's pinned I will stitch that together and then I will come back and I will trim that down to a quarter inch and after that I will turn it out and I will under stitch it and press it she said I already told ya, yeah, yeah. I never dated a black guy. I said you brown yourself. Let me offer help. Come on inside. Well, everybody knows your name. Everybody knows your name. Time to catch a flight, but you can make me go. While I was stitching and as I got to the corner sections in the back I drew the seam allowance right on the lining fabric so that my corners would be very sharp when I was stitching them so that's what you see with the purple markings I'm clipping down it just to the stitch line careful not to cut through the stitch line so that when I go and trim this down a quarter of an inch, I can get really close. And then when I turn it, I can have really sharp corners. So now we have our clean neck edge finish. We want the same finish for our armholes. So in order to achieve that, we have to do the tuck and roll method so we take one side and we roll it once we get to the other side we grab the end of the fabric and then we uh, wrap all of the fabric that we rolled in the middle and pin the two outer pieces which will be your shoulder pieces we're going to pin those together and so all of the fabric that we rolled is in between the two um, uh, pieces of fabric now the key to um, doing this successfully is you want to make sure that when you go to stitch this when you stitch in your seam allowance you want to make sure that your seam does not catch the fabric that is rolled in between the two two fabric ends and so um, the best way to do this is basically is to just roll it tight so you can be sure to give yourself enough clearance. And then the other half is you're just going to have to feel for it. And if you feel as though you may be catching some of the rolled fabric, then just stop and kind of uh, push it over a little bit with your fingers. Now that we have stitched it we go in and we trim it down to a quarter of an inch and after we have trimmed it down a quarter of an inch we are going to grab one end of the fabric that's rolled in between 
and pull it through. We're going to turn it inside out. He asked if I could stay a while. Sure to make your small clippings on your curve so that when you turn the fabric, the fabric will lay flat. Repeat the process for the other side and then press everything flat. I never dated a black guy. I said you brown yourself. Let me offer help. Come on inside. I used a simple pant pattern that included pockets, but I only opted to include one pocket as one side of the jumpsuit had a side zipper and adding a pocket to that side would have been too much bulk. The original pattern was uh, for a dress, but I converted it to a jumpsuit. And so I added a waistband piece that would go in between the bodice and the pants. I then had to gather the pants a little bit to fit on to the um, bodice piece. So that's what I'm doing now. The final step was to finish the overskirt piece, which was gathered um, and then attached to a thin waistband. I used a large bar hook on the overskirt to hold it closed, inserted an invisible zipper in the jumpsuit, and used a blind hem to finish the pants. Here is the finished look. I absolutely love this piece and it fits me like a custom piece. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. 
thank you for watching and please hit the subscribe button so that you will be notified when I post my next video and I look forward to seeing you at that time. Take care. Unlocking all the memories of my new home Ventilated echoes playing to and fro To and fro Back and forth, yeah Caught some kids dancing in the alleyway Crazy how the melodies began to play, yeah